Welcome forward, chapter 2, page 13. Because of the real strength of its vision, it pulls the will into its service and impels the mind to concur. This reestablishes the true power of the will and makes it increasingly unable to tolerate delay. The mind then realizes with increasing certainty that delay is only a way of increasing unnecessary pain which is n it need not tolerate at all. The pain threshold drops accordingly and the mind becomes increasingly sensitive to what it would once have regarded as a very minor intrusion or discomfort. The children of God are entitled to perfect comfort, which comes from the sense of perfect trust. Until they achieve this, they waste themselves and their true creative power on useless attempts to make themselves more comfortable by inappropriate means. But the real means is already provided and does not involve any effort at all on their part. Their egocentricity usually misperceives this as personally insulting, an interpretation which obviously arises from their misconceptions of themselves. Egocentricity and communion cannot coexist. Even the terms are contradictory. The atonement is the only gift that is worthy of being offered to the altar of God. This is because of the inestimable value of the altar itself. It was created perfect and is entirely worthy of receiving perfection. God is lonely without his souls and they are lonely without him. Men must learn to perceive the world as a means of healing the separation. The atonement is the guarantee that they will ultimately succeed. Healing as release from fear. The emphasis will now be on healing. The miracle is the means. The atonement is the principle. And healing is the result. Those who speak of a miracle of healing are combining two orders of reality inappropriately. Healing is not a miracle. The atonement or the final miracle is a remedy while any type of healing is a result. The kind of error to which atonement is applied is irrelevant. Essentially, all healing is the release from fear. To undertake this, you cannot be fearful yourself. You do not understand healing because of your own fear. A major step in the atonement plan is to undo error at all levels. Illness which is really not right-mindedness, is the result of level confusion in the sense that it always entails the belief that what is amiss in one level can adversely affect another. We have constantly referred to miracles as the means of correcting level confusion, and all mistakes must be corrected at the level on which they occur. Only the mind is capable of error. The body can act erroneously, but this is only because it is responding to misthought. The body cannot create, and the belief that it can, a fundamental error, produces all physical symptoms. All physical illness represents a belief in magic. The whole distortion which creates magic rests on the belief that there is a creative ability in matter which the mind cannot control. This error can take two forms. It can be believed that the mind can miscreate in the body, or that the body can miscreate in the mind. If it is understood that the mind, which is the only level of creation, cannot create beyond itself, neither type of confusion need occur. The reason only the mind can create is more obvious than many may be immediately apparent. The soul has been created. The body is a learning device for the mind. 
learning devices are not lessons in themselves. Their purpose is merely to facilitate the link thinking of the learner. The more that, the most that a faulty use of a learning device can do is to fail to facilitate learning. This has no power in itself to introduce actual learning errors. The body is properly understood, shares the invulnerability of the atonement to the two-edge application. This is not because the body is a miracle, but because it is not inherently open to misinterpretation. The body is merely a fact in human experience. Its ability can be, and frequently are, overvaluated. However, it is almost impossible to deny its existence. Those who do so are engaging in a particularly unworthy form of denial. The term unworthy here implies simply that it is not necessary to protect the mind by denying the unmindful. If one denies this unfortunate aspect of the mind's power, one is also denying the power itself. All material means which man accepts as remedies for the body's ills are merely restatements of magical principles. It was the first level of the error to believe that the body created its own illness. It is a second misstep to attempt to heal it through non-creative agents. It does not follow, however, that the use of these very weak corrective devices are evil. Sometimes the illnesses has a sufficient great hold over the mind to render the person inaccessible to atonement. In this case, it may be wise to utilize a compromise approach to the mind and body in which something from the outside is temporarily given healing belief. This is because the last thing that can help the non-right-minded or the sick is an increase in fear. They are already in a weakened, a fear-weakened state if they are inappropriately exposed to an undiluted miracle, they may be um, precipitate into panic. This is particularly likely to occur when upside-down perceptions has included the belief that miracles are frightening. The value of atonement does not lie in the manner in which it is expressed. In fact, it is truly used it will inevitably be expressed in whatever way is most helpful to the receiver. This means that a miracle, to attain its full efficacy, must be expressed in a language which the recipient can understand without fear. It does not follow, by any means, that this is the highest level of communication of which he is capable. It does mean, however, that this is the highest level of communication of which he is now capable of. Thus ends page 13.